Welcome to the Fantasy Throwdown Podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Callender. It is draft night, and thus far, there's been quite a bit to talk about, especially given what's gone on with the quarterbacks and just how much has gone on. You know, I I can talk on and on about this, but uh, I'm going to bring my dad on the line here just so we can recap what's gone on and just get some of our insights uh, as to what has played out here in what has been a very memorable day one of the 2018 NFL Draft for in more ways than one. But, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same in some regard. So, with that in mind, uh, let's get started with uh, uh, the breakdown of the draft. Yeah, so, Pop, uh, let, let's, let's start this one from the top because, I mean... We got Lamar Jackson on the board still at twenty, uh, where I picked twenty-seven in the first round. But I mean, given given how this entire draft has gone so far, the only takeaway I have from this draft is that dumb teams are still making some of the dumb picks that you'd swear teams would have learned by now not to make some of these reaches. But I, I I I honestly believe that some of these teams have forgotten uh, that they made dumb picks before, and because maybe they made one or two good picks last year, that they can get away with making a reach in the early rounds. Well, one of the things, uh, one of the things that I I kind of laugh at is, and I hope it will come for them, is Arizona. You have so much problems with getting quarterbacks hurt. And what do you do? You take a quarterback that is kind of have a history of injury. Just and like, I, I just like your own starter. Just like your own starter. Yeah. So Josh Rosen goes to Arizona at ten, and who's Arizona starter? Sam Bradford, the QB who's most likely to be injured before Week Three next year. But, th- but that's the problem I, I have with Arizona. You had that problem with 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 with, with um with Carson Palmer. Oh yeah, oh. Carson. Yeah, Carson Palmer. With, with, with Palmer, right? Because there was one year that they went down to about the fourth string quarterback or something like that, you know. And then they never addressed the quarterback for all those years. And the first year that you decide to draft draft the future of your franchise. You draft a guy that has concussion problems and, 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 and had a bad shoulder. Hey, you know, look, maybe you don't want to put a black quarterback in Arizona. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I mean, you know, well, I, 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 I got to call it as I see it because I don't understand. Because you definitely reach in with, with, with Rose because... This guy couldn't even play the, the, the ball game last year because of the concussion. Yeah, my... I mean, doesn't anything tell you, hey, the one thing we don't want to have is a quarterback that's not durable. Yeah, see... The, I mean... But my, my issue with Arizona was just the simple fact that your own head coach, who you wanted back... They wanted Bruce Arians back coaching that team, but Bruce Arians said, no, I'm going to retire. I, I I really need to retire. Bruce Arians is the one who said the one QB that he was interested in and uh, in drafting this year in the first round was Lamar Jackson. And if you valued well, Bruce uh, Arians' opinion that much, wouldn't you think that have a little bit more credence than what you actually went with? <laughs> well, do, 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 did you ever think that Maybe that's the reason Bruce Arians retired. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, that, did that come across your mind? Oh, you know, that, that my goodness. He probably said, you know, I'm looking at the draft and um, the guy that I look at, you know, and then he, he, he hears something like, now nah, we like Rosen. And he's thinking, I'm going to go through this shit again. <laughs> and freaking quarter, I got one Bruce quarterback starting and... You bring in the future another blue quarterback, it's time for me to get out. Oh, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the reason. You, you know, know what? That, that's a very good point, Pop. I wasn't even thinking about that. But, yeah. I, 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 think about it. Think about it. Yeah. Because maybe that's the reason he says, hey, I'm not going to break my balls 
coach in this team and having it ready and then the quarterback goes down. It happened to me, what, three, four years in a freaking row? Yeah. And now you bring in Sam Brittle Bradford? Huh? I mean, Sam Bradford is a guy that you bring in in a one-game season. You have a one-game season? Yeah, you, you can sign Sam Bradford because he can win a game for you. Yeah. You know, he can make any throw on the field for one game. You know? Oh, my God. I mean, you want a better... You want a better game than that game we played for Minnesota last year? Hey guys, look at this teaser. <laughs> anyway, that I mean, <laughs> it's just re- it's I mean, utterly it's ridiculous. One. But uh, but but here but here's the thing: is like, but Arizona's one case. Let's just start with the top of the draft. The Cleveland Browns. If you told anyone, if you gave any self-respecting GM. A hundred different scenarios of how Cleveland could play out having the first pick and the fourth pick. The two draft picks that they made, I don't think a single GM worth his grand assault could have ever envisioned that scenario because there's so many ways that they could have ended up with those two players without actually having to use the first and fourth pick of the NFL draft. They could have gotten so many more draft picks and still traded down to get uh, Baker Mayfield and well, Denzel Ward. It, like these are no. two picks that made no sense. <laughs> Dwayne, ever since the college season ended, I kept saying I like Baker Mayfield out of all of those quarterbacks. All right, I kept saying that I liked him. I liked yeah, yeah, no, I know you did. Mayfield. But there's no way I'm taking Baker Mayfield at n- number one because I don't think anybody else was taking him at number one. And since I have the number one pick and the number four pick, I, I was, hey, you know what they could have do? You know, Cleveland is so stupid that they could have traded one of those picks, okay? Easily. Either the number one pick, the number one pick, Traded and get another number one, a little lower down, and they still could have got Baker Mayfield. They might have been able to get Chubb. And thinking about where those people went, yeah, they could have get Baker Mayfield, Chubb, and that 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 defense. That's a war. Yeah, the, yeah. Look, I, I, that pick to I, one of those teams that really wanted. Honestly, given how Cleveland handled this draft. Cleveland could have absolutely have screwed the Giants by actually being smart about the tra- uh, about the trades that they could have executed because there there was an easily a scenario where they could have traded that number one pick, gotten Denver involved to move up, uh, and actually because I still think at a certain point that. Uh, uh, Denver uh, w- would have been willing to actually make a trade for Darnold. I still believe that uh, if Darnold was still there. I still think that Denver might have actually done it. But I think Denver actually thought that it was going to be uh, it was it was go- it was going to be uh, a-, a case where uh, Cleveland was going to take Baker Mayfield uh, once the news broke that Mayfield was going to be the guy and that Chubb was going to be gone. By the time I, I I honestly think that uh, Denver had no aspirations of trying to make a trade with Cleveland because they figured that, that Cleveland's going to take Chubb at four. I I I think John Elway is like is 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 over the moon happy now because he got the player that he would have wanted outside of Darnold and he didn't have to do anything. Well, yeah, he, he didn't have to give away anything to get it. You're, you're right, you know, because, like I said, I thought that people had screwed themselves because I, look, like I said, you take two terms and you give it to all of them GMs there. They, you probably have GMs that like Baker Mayfield. You really think the depth was going to take Baker Mayfield and uh, moving up there uh, at number, number three and... Taking Baker Mayfield, but but, but but see, I, I don't even think the Jets was going to do that. But but that's where I, I I laugh at Cleveland because my thing is the Jets have such a bad history of reaching for QBs. They had to go with the safest pick possible. So my thing was 
the Jets could have easily have ended up in a situation where even though we both have issues with Rosen's durability, I easily could have seen Rosen going to the Jets once Darnold was off the board because uh, Rosen is still the best prototypical passer the Jets could have drafted. So I still think the uh, Jets would have taken Rosen. I don't think uh, May- Mayfield was on the Jets' radar unless they traded down the pick. The, pro- the thing, why we are, the, 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 the problem the Jets have is that the Jets have to make a pick where even if it goes bust, their fan base can say, you reach for a guy and, you know, because in New York, the Jets had a choice of either taking Donald or Rosa so that the fan base wouldn't scream in their, in their ears if anything went wrong. Yeah. Now, if anything goes wrong, at least they can say, yeah, when we pick the best guy available, it just didn't work out. Yeah, the, you know, and, and that's the thing. The, literally, the Jets, even though they made a... I, I still think they made a dumb trade with the Colts because they had no way of knowing that any of those players were going to be available until uh, until the draft because there was still a chance the Giants could have traded the number two pick and the Browns could have taken Darnold and then the Jets would have been screwed out of having uh, the two QBs that they were most interested in, and then have to make the reach with yeah. Mayfield. But, like, Cleveland yeah. screwed this thing up so horribly that I, I just, I scratched my head. Look, Baker Mayfield may turn out to be a very good quarterback, you know. But, but not with that I franchise. I, I, my my, my, yeah. issue, my yeah. issue with Baker Mayfield is that uh, Baker Mayfield, given that he's undersized, is going to take hits in the NFL, and it's Part of it is is that if he, unless he's properly protected, it's gonna screw up his mechanics. And once his mechanics go, all those the things that people rave about with his accuracy and being able to throw the deep ball, that goes away once you start getting hit. And my thing with Cleveland is when you're in a division where you're playing the Ravens and the Steelers twice a year, you're gonna get hit. More often than not, and it's just no getting around yeah. it. And my, my, that's my biggest gripe with uh, how how they uh, how they uh, address the situation because I I truly feel as though they uh, that like if you if you're if you're if you're if you're, if you're, if you're in the AFC North, you get, you gotta have uh, quarterbacks with size. It's it's just the way it is. I mean. You know, like it or not, you need a quarterback with size. I, I mean, that's because it's just going to be brutal games. That's my, that's my biggest issue with the uh, with uh, the the pick because I like Baker Mayfield in certain situations. I just think that this is a no win situation. The problem I have with it, like I said, is that in a way, come like you. In a way, like you waste a pick because nobody else was going to go up there and pick him at number one. A lot of people like him at quarterback, but they're not going to use a number one pick on him. Yeah. You know, it, 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 you know what that reminds me of? And I'm not saying it's going to turn out like that. Like when the, the Jazz got up there and picked Eli Apple. Yeah, it wasn't that high a pick. <laughs> you could get him down lower down in the draft. You, you know, you're bringing back uh, horrible memories, but like that—that that was yeah, you, you remember. Wrong. You remember that night? That was the night that where I and we've been we've we've been covering drafts together for like what is it? Basically about 25 years now. That was like one of the few times I just like was so completely bummed out by a giant draft. Because I already knew it was going to hell in the handbasket from that point on. Because, because like, if if that was the if that was the the strategy, uh, that's why I knew the entire process was completely uh, screwed up from the get go. If that was the actual yeah, valuation for Eli Apple. <laughs> Look, let me tell you something. That's the problem I have when, when, you know, whenever you, 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 look, the guys that sit up there, right, whether you're watching ESPN or whether you're watching NFL Network, uh, the, the guys, hey, 
it's not like they don't know what they're talking about. They may not be always right, but for you to make a pick and everybody's like, uh, eat an apple and, and um, uh, 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 not, not, not Kuiper, it's um, the guy that's on the NFL Network with the, with the kind of blonde hair. Um, he says, uh, what I remember about him at Ohio State is that he yelled a lot. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, you, 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 you yeah, you, it, it was May, it was Mayak, Mike Mayak who made the point. Mayak, 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 yeah, he's like, uh, the, the thing I remember about him, I is that what I remember about him is that he yelled a lot and he showed you the, the the clips and he was holding all the time and it just continued right along into the Giants. I mean, you gotta be kidding me, you gotta be kidding me, you know. So it's 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 it, it's it's crazy that you know when 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 you reach it like that, that's what I I hate. I don't like when you know like okay the Tampa Bay. I don't understand. You get thrown on all the time. You have the the, the, the defensive back there. You take you take the lineman. How strong you want your line to be? Yes, I know if your line is giving pressure that the quarterback don't have time to pick. But when your oh, yeah. when your secondary is as bad as they are, you, you, you don't have to think long. Just yeah. show it. Oh yeah, uh, she was gonna get gonna be those those defensive backs. Uh, Gal, you're jumping yeah. you're jumping ahead, but like, yeah, you're, you're you're getting to my exact point. It's like it's not that I dis uh, dislike some of the picks. It's just I'm looking at it, I'm like from a need perspective. Some of these teams, I'm just scratching my head, it beca- because yes. be- because like, and, and I, now I'm gonna jump ahead. But it's like the fact that Derwin James fell all the way to the Chargers. Like teams like the Chargers are gonna be stacked on defense for the next five years because they've got uh, guys like Joey Bosa. It with picks where they fell. Even though they were better qualified than some of the other guys that uh, got picked ahead of them, and you know, I, I just I just gotta shake my head because like uh, some of the safeties that fell, I'm a little bit annoyed with the Giants because uh, you know this is where as much as much as much as I like Saquon Barkley, I wish we were able to trade back because the amount of guys who dropped. And did it drop oh and, 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 and dro- it dropped for lack of an actual, uh, uh, like, a explainable reason. And, like, th- there were guys dr- just dropping for the sake of dropping. Because, uh, like, we, we lost out on some uh, 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 players tonight that I, I thought could have been an immediate impact for yeah. us. Not that, that, not that Barkley can't make an immediate impact, but... To to help supplement some of the issues that we saw last year with the secondary, and we could have bolstered the offensive line. That's the thing. But this this is what yeah. My thing is that if we had gotten that pick, if if we had gotten the trade out of that pick, we might have been able to pick up Nelson and still pick up that safety. And you, you know, we just need another good safety with Landon Collins here, and we'd be set for a long time. You know, but um, you know, I I have no idea if nobody called or you know, so I don't know. Well, I, I, I can't. Well, the the, the yeah. issue the issue was is that I I honestly think that Gellerman wanted the boatload of two first round picks, so like a, uh, the first round pick uh, this year and a first round pick next year. And at least two uh, two second round picks uh, to consider moving out of. Uh, uh, so ba- basically, he wants what the Colts got plus uh, a first round pick for next year. I think that was the issue. It's just the asking price. Teams weren't sold enough on these QBs to actually pay that premium. That's that to me. That that might have been the problem. You know, because I get, I because about. I because I I I know what Gettleman was looking for. He was looking for the RG three deal that the Rams were able to uh, steal off of uh, Washington. It, it, it had a quarterback. It had a quarterback for that. Yeah, and it, 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 yeah, it, 
But it's like at the same time, get, given that like we could have ended up in a draft where we could have gotten a uh, Quentin Nelson and Derwin James by moving down, it, it to me it's a missed opportunity. That's my only thing. It's like uh, those two guys are going to be really good for a long time, especially Derwin James. The fact that he he went as far as he did uh, down to seventeen is. Kind of embarrassing. So let, let's kind of just go through. Let's kind of go through the picks because uh, we, 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 in the top ten we had uh, uh, Barkley go to the Giants at two. Darnold falls to the Jets literally because of the Browns' stupidity. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we we already kind of dissected that. It, it's just the fact that the Browns could have traded down and gotten Mayfield and gotten extra picks. To, to actually make this this Ward selection because they because uh, to your point they could have drafted Chubb and gotten Ward in the first round and drafted May it's like there were ways of yeah. orchestrating this there were ways of getting this done you know I I, I mean you know, it's just I, a matter of getting creative I, I, but I, like there were, to your point there are ways of getting this done and still it's like it's like you have a chance to have cake. And you could have gotten the frosting, got it too, if you just waited for someone to bring from some frosting. But like you were so greedy that you just ate the cake, and the other, and then meanwhile the guy's coming over with the frosting, and he's like, "Dude, you couldn't have waited." <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I really didn't get it. I, I, I you know, I, I kept hearing, you know, the the the, the Baker Mayfield talk, and and I'm like, I actually thought I, I like him, but. Not a number one. Well, well, my my, my issue was is that I actually thought that this was actually a new age for the Browns where they were putting out the world's greatest smokescreen because everyone was expecting the Browns to screw up this pick so that when everyone was talking up, oh, wow, Baker Mayfield's going number one, I actually thought that the Browns were doing a smokescreen to take Darnold and catch the... uh, uh, Well, actually, no, I thought it was going to be a smokescreen so that... Uh, the uh, the Browns could actually end up in a situation where uh, they t- they take Barkley, they force the Giants into a situation where they have to kind of trade out on the pick, or they just take Nelson and Chubb in a panic, and then you have a, a situation where okay, maybe the Jets take Darnold, but if you really love Mayfield anyway, Mayfield's right there. But if you talked up Mayfield as the number one, maybe the Jets take Mayfield at three, and then you take Darnold at four. I thought it was a smoke screen. I, I, I honestly did not expect the, the the Browns to actually go through with Mayfield. That that's that's where you know I I, I just I just scratched my head. So uh, at the pick number four, you had Denzel Ward uh, from Ohio State, the quarterback, going to the Browns. The issue with uh, Denzel Ward is that this goes right back to what we were talking about with Eli Apple. You know, Denzel Ward, fine quarterback, but in the Big Ten, it wasn't like he was a world beater. It's like, this is a guy who was a mid-first round pick. Everyone had him graded mid-first round. Why the hell is he going at four? Because it's the Browns. It, it's just like, everyone, it's like the, the Browns make it look like everyone else is playing ch- uh, chess while they're playing checkers. It's like they're playing a completely different game than everyone else. I, 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 and not in a good way, but you have guys like you have guys like the Raekwon Smith, the linebacker, which was one of my favorite players in the. Oh, draft. yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're yeah, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get into some of those picks that yeah. I I, so, I thought were absolute this, this steals. This, this is what I'm, I'm saying. The Bronx have all of these guys. Yeah, you, you can take Chubb and put them opposite to. Uh, Miles Garrett yeah, and your first pick last year. yeah yeah Miles okay, Garrett uh, opposite Garrett. Yeah, I mean I I just don't understand that number four. I don't understand either of the picks. I don't understand going up taking Baker Mayfield at number one when nobody else was going to take him at number one. No, I don't understand you picking the the, the, the corner at four with I I mean. Didn't you? Did you? Did you watch any of the the, the, the college championship last year? Make up its Patrick. I mean, I mean, you have all of these guys. 
It's like there were so many yeah. other playmakers in the secondary they could have grabbed that I, I, I could have at least justified. I'm like, really? <laughs> but, like, and, and the best part about – and you know what the best part about this? If you're the Browns, because of where you, dra- you drafted them, technically the rookie wage scale, even though it kicks into effect and it's balanced, you basically have overpaid him for being the fourth overall pick when he has a draft grade – of in the mid teens, so you're overpaying him as a rookie. So even if he pans out, you paid him a couple of extra million that you really didn't have to. So now the Browns are in a situation where, with all these draft picks that they've used, you've got three guys that in five years are eligible for hundred million dollar contracts because uh, because if you if you think about it, you got a quarterback. You got a defensive end that can rake up a lot of sacks. And if Ward is anywhere halfway decent and get some picks because of the rookie weight scale, those three players are going to be worth, if you extend them to a fifth year and multi-year deals, those guys are going to be averaging close to $100 million total. And it's probably going to be more given the way that that Jimmy Garoppolo deal is, is going to screw up the cap for every quarterback going forward. So it's like you got three guys tied up. With a hundred million on your team, and that's that's the best case scenario if they're good enough to justify those contracts. And you're the Browns, and you don't win anything. You're you're going to be salary cap tied. I, I, I like I said, I don't understand. I really don't understand the Browns. You know, I, 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 another thing, like you talk about that Garoppolo thing. How come they 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 they, they, if they were still in need of a quarterback? How come they didn't call New England? Did, uh, well, 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 the, the well, the excuse the excuse for that one is the guys who were in charge at that time when they were being offered Garoppolo, they have since been fired. Well, I, I got news for them; they got more people to fire because uh, you know, if I'm a wrong fan, if I'm a wrong fan. I am not happy tonight. It's just... I, that, like I said, it's not that I mind Baker Mayfield being on my team. Because I, I kind of like him more than the other quarterbacks. Yeah. But, I, I, not at number one. Yeah, no. Not they, they, at number one. It, it's just completely misvaluating, uh, misevaluating players in the market at, uh, marketplace you did. Because yeah, it, it, it's... it's because because basi- basically this is the equivalent of buying a house in a neighborhood and you paid about a hundred a uh, hundred thousand more for your house but your square footage is less than someone else uh, uh, and they have like a, a fully a fully furnished basement and yes. you still don't have a fur- furnished basement and you have to still do some additional repair work and you're, you're asking everyone else yes. what they paid and they're like. Did you do any estimates like on Zillow or anything else? And you're like, no, nah, I just bought the place. It's like, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that that's 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 exactly what the, the, the way it is because you know it ought to be a law that teams like the Browns and them shouldn't have all those picks because I mean I I I am seeing the Browns almost right where they were last year and they would have had. One first round pick last year, two first round pick this year, including the two number ones. And you know, I'm, I'm not seeing where you 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 you, you getting. I I I I I I I really you like know. this pick. By see, this is why I get annoyed because teams like New England get it right, and you know. It's just like, everyone looks at it and it's like, oh, yeah, what a great pick by New England. It's like, it, because they were really obvious picks. I mean, New England, New England just, yeah, me, uh, yeah, they, they just, they just tried the Sony Michel, but they also got the, ta- they, they also got the tackle I wanted to. <laughs> because they, 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 that's, with, that's who they're going to replace Lois with. Yeah, but they also, but they also got his, uh, his, uh, his tackle and win. Because I wanted Isaiah Wynn on the Giants because I, I had a feeling he was not going to fall into the second round that people were projecting. 
I thought the Giants were going to have to trade yeah. back into the first round to get him. And instead, New England, instead New England grabs him. Uh, oh, yeah. But, yeah, let, let, let's get into some of these other picks because – I, I don't. I don't want to. It it annoys me enough as it is that New England keeps winning these NFL drafts, and you know these teams are too dumb to actually uh, pick up on what they should be doing. But uh, so uh, at number five, uh, I mean El- Elway, I-, I thought had you know the best pick of, of, of the ball. He had a choice between Bradley Chubb or uh, Quentin Nelson, and I mean. You could have gone any way, or or he could have gone with Roquan Smith, but it's like I I, I thought Chubb was the best fit because with with, uh, with uh, what happens with Von Miller, uh, because teams try to double team him, if you put in a guy like Chubb who has great hands, you basically uh, eliminate that problem because now who are you going to double? It's like you can only block one of them, and Denver's defense, even though the secondary is going to need still need some more work to get it replaced. They now have their pass rush back again. When they put when they put him on one side and, 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 and Miller on the other side, like I say, you're gonna have to take a pick of who you're gonna block. Because they're probably gonna block Miller because you know, Chubb is a rookie, but you know, yeah. after, after you demolish your quarterback a couple of times, you're going to realize you have a problem yeah. on your hands. Well, the thing is, because yeah. because of uh, just watching him play, uh, Chubb has some of the best hand fighting I've seen in a prospect since uh, you, you, you're going back to Aaron Donald. But, like, that that's who he reminds me of. He reminds me a lot of Aaron Donald with the way he, he, can, win, he can just win at the line of scrimmage. Not by, like, uh, how he uh, gets off the block, but just by how much he can actually uh, use his hands to uh, create position and space for himself. Uh, the, Ravens, the Ravens just, um, they just traded for the 32nd pick. So uh, 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 I, I'm, I'm interested in seeing this is the Lamar Jackson pick. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious if they're going to cap off the first round with Lamar Jackson because Lord knows they need to replace Flacco. <laughs> they, 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 they got to figure out some, time, some kind of exit plan from Flacco uh, to tra- uh, transition here. Because even if, uh, even if uh, certain teams uh, think that, and, you know, again, this is why I question some of these teams. Uh, some people are saying that uh, Lamar Jackson's uh, uh, ceiling is basically being Tyrod Taylor. And my thing is, Tyrod Taylor is actually still a serviceable NFL QB in this league. So how is that a, 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 how is that a poor ceiling? It's like there are so many of these quarterbacks that have busted. And as much as people try to malign Tyrod Taylor, he still puts up numbers. Even when uh, Buffalo was trying to get rid of him. He still got Buffalo in the uh, in the playoffs, which hasn't happened since. Oh yeah, t- it hadn't happened in uh, eighteen years. So uh, you know, I, I I just I just gotta shake my head at times. <laughs> actually, it wasn't even eighteen; it, it was actually twenty years. Well, let me tell you something. Well, you, you know, you know, you know how that goes. You know. Um... Yep, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. But it's like, it made sense because, like, the Ravens need, because uh, uh, I was waiting for the Ravens to be possibly the fit because I'm like, Ozzie Newsom knows he needs to, because this is Ozzie Newsom's last draft. He need, he knows he needs to figure out a way of getting someone in that can take over for Flacco because Flacco at best has one more year left in him because that contract's coming up. And they're not going to extend it, so they got to figure out an exit strategy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what that's what might have been a problem, one of the problem, but last year was a terrible year for Flacco. Yeah, that that's actually see going back to it, like with some of these other picks, that's why I think Buffalo panicked. And traded up for Josh Allen because I think Buffalo was afraid of Baltimore. Because like uh, after the Broncos took uh, Chubb, uh, the Colts took Nelson, 
And then it was the Bills trading up. But like my my thing was the Bills tra- uh, the Bills traded up uh, with the Buccaneers uh, to take Josh Allen at QB, and I think it's because they were afraid of uh, Baltimore because there were there were a couple of teams that I think the Bills were afraid of. And even though you and I were saying that like the next couple of picks like between the Bears and the 49ers, eh, like they had their quarterback. Mm. So. Yeah. I, This is a perfect thing for Jackson. He needs to go somewhere where there's an established quarterback. So chances are that he's going to have to come in and play this year. It's 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 it's, it's you, you don't have that. So yeah. he's going to have at least a year to sit and watch the NFL and how everything works. It's the Ben Simmons thing, where you're there, you're not playing. But you're right there, you seen everything, and you know, you know, you can you can watch defenses yeah. and the, their schemes and whatever. Uh, and it it it, 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 it I, and I think that's one of the best things for him. Yeah, you know, yeah, because so we'll he see. he because he, he he needs time to develop. But like these people selling them short, saying that oh, I don't think he'll ever develop into an elite NFL passer. How many of these quarterbacks you actually see being elite uh, NFL level passers? I mean, we we just had a we just had a a, 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 a playoff matchup uh, in the conference finals that involved Case Keenum, Blake Bortles, Nick Foles, oh yeah, and Tom Brady. Can, can you name the three guys that have no business being there? I mean, it's like we're not the age of having uh, touch perfect passers. It's pretty much going by the wayside. You need guys that can at least be athletic enough to move and be competent. That that's really what NFL quarterback play is these days. You know, now the place I really would have liked him to go was the Saints because I I think Sean Payton is a is a really good um thing at, at grooming quarterbacks and you know Breeze is not gonna last much longer. You know. But it didn't work out with him going to Yeah. To, to, but but to, I, 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 th- I to, think the, the Saints. I think the Saints are actually looking at Mason Rudolph. The, the the when I saw the Saints pass on Lamar Jackson, I had a feeling that they're probably looking at a a, a Mason Rudolph. Because when they when they trade it up and you know give that that first round pick next year, uh, yeah. Know, oh well, it, 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 I really needed the extra, uh, you know, yeah. rush up, but you know. Well, it, the Saints had the uh, strangest pick of the first round because no one had that uh, had that guy ranked in the first round. It, it, people are kind of confused by that pick, so. Yeah, I know. Because after Josh Allen, after Josh Allen went, people, people were thinking that Rosen and Lamar Jackson were soon to follow with teams trading up. The ba- the Bears tr- uh, drafted Roquan Smith, which is a typical Bears pick, but that's a very good pick. He's going to be a very good linebacker. Oh, oh, I, I mean, I, I love I love Roquan Smith. I love it. it it's a it's a ve- it's a gr- it's a great pick. Dick Van is going to do wonders with the kid. But it's just such a Bears pick because, again, they know how to draft defense. It's the offensive side of the football that they're completely lost on. But yeah, that's a well, great well, defensive it's, pick. It's, it's one thing you can say. He's gone to a tongue that appreciates linebackers. Yeah. They know good linebacker play when they see it. Yeah. That's the one thing. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the next yeah, pick. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. No, Chicago got a good linebacker there. there there's no question about it. I mean that 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 yeah. guy is def, definitely making a couple of Pro Bowls. So I have no doubt about that. But uh, yeah, the yeah. Ne- the next pick made no sense because uh, I I actually thought that the 49ers were probably going defensive tackle, and instead they go offensive line. But you know they they've got they've got Joe Staley and they've got Brown as their tackles. So the 49ers were set a tackle. 
I mean, uh, I, I mean, the, everyone had McGlinchey going a little bit later in the first round, but to a team that didn't have any uh, any offensive tackle, so that's why they thought he might have ended up with either uh, either the Raiders or New England. But like the 49ers drafted him and they got two Pro Bowl tackles. So uh, unless he's going to guard, but you don't draft a tackle to go to convert him to a guard. It, it was one of the most bizarre picks of the night. But it only got compounded. It only got beat out because of what the Saints did. Uh, then Arizona traded up to get Rosen, which which we talked about in the leadoff. Out of all the all, out of all the scenarios where Arizona finally drafts a QB, you trade the most injury prone uh, QB out of the four. It's like it's it's a uh, it's it's stunning. It's stunning that Arizona I comes up with that one. When when I saw that, I say you would think a team that got snake bit so many times with with, with, with with their quarterback getting knocked out. And ended the season with a backup. You would tell yourself, "This is never going to happen to me again." Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, so very, very confusing. Uh, then came finally, Minka Fitz, Fitzpatrick goes off the board. Uh, you know, Tremaine uh, Tr- 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 Edmonds, Derwin James, and Minka Fitzpatrick are all picks. That I'm like, these guys were the best guys on the board. And they're outside the top ten. It's like, this was such a bizarre draft because it was the first time ever they said you had four QBs in the top ten. But the reason why you don't have four QBs in the top ten is that if you're drafting four QBs in the top ten, it means that a couple of GMs screwed up their evaluation process. Because they're not that many good QBs that they would ever crack the top ten. It's like these guys are like are trying to sell hope to these uh, NFL fan bases because it makes uh, it makes no sense. Man, Vegas is just kicking. I'm, I, I'm telling you, this would have been the best year for somebody to trade up to number two, take that pick, and we could have been anywhere between eight and ten, and we'd have been great. Yeah, but we uh, get the tackle. We 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 get Nelson, and we 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 could have get we could have get Smith, we could have get um, Mika Fitzpatrick, we could get any of those guys. Yeah. Because I, I don't understand how they, they they took so long to take these guys off the board. Yeah. And I'm it, like, I mean, all them other years when we we was down there in the tenth pick and stuff, we can this shit can happen to us. Yeah, that's the, that's <laughs> the, the that's the frustrating part. Right? I'm like. Really? Really? You, you got... You, yeah. How many years we had the 10th pick and, and the 9th pick and, and, and watched all the good guys go right before us? You know? It, it's crazy. It's crazy. I know some of these teams are just saying, Christmas came early this year. You know? When they see these, these guys falling right in their yeah. lap. Oh, oh, actually, the one thing one thing I will say because like uh, uh I got I got it on mute, but Van Pelt mentioned it. It's like it was really good seeing Ryan Chase here being able to walk. It, 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 it was really good seeing him being able to walk to the podium because uh, it, you know you, you you you'd swear that 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 was turning into a, a Dennis Bird situation like when you initially saw his injury. It's just. Uh, you know, because it, it, it can happen to, in in any NFL play, but like you were like yeah. what, once the halo goes on, you automatic almost automatically assume that they're never gonna walk again. I mean, his play is is basically over. Oh yeah, no, no, he's, he's never, never playing again. again. No, he's never but, playing um, again. No, I don't. I don't think he's. Once you damage that that thing in the back there. Uh, I don't think you want to be playing contact sports anymore. No, you. you uh, I don't think you want to you, be doing you that. Can't, you can't risk because it's completely unstable now. But, no, it was good seeing them, though. But, yeah, it, it's just like, it was oh, getting, on. it was. I'm, 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 see, uh, that's what um, 
um, Hasselbeck is saying. It stunned him to see Baker Mayfield go at number one. Yeah, because you could have, you could have, you could have maneuvered <laughs> this so. <laughs> He said he keeps saying about Russell Wilson, but he doesn't have Russell Wilson's speed. He doesn't have Russell Wilson's arm strength. You know. Listen, there. Cleveland's happy with him. I I don't know why, but they they, they to me, Baker Mayfield has a big. Hasselbeck says the same thing. He would have still be there at four. Yes. Yes, <laughs> because there, there are enough issues with Mayfield that you like no one is taking him over uh, Darnold or Rosen. If you're the Jets, that's why it's like I'm not sure why they were so afraid that the Giants were going to take a QB. The Giants were either going to take Barkley or trade down. So if you take Barkley, the Giants probably trade that pick down and, and try to see if they can get Nelson or it, it, maybe they get Chubb if they trade further back. But that's what the Giants were going to do. When you left it up to the Giants at number two and Barkley's on the board, yeah, like because the, here, here's the thing. Gellerman, uh, Gellerman would have heard, uh, would have uh, would have never heard the end of it if Barkley turns out to be the Le'Veon Bell kind of running back that people are expecting him to be, and I actually think he will be, that's a hard thing to pass up considering what Pittsburgh does with their offense. You know, yes, you can have a QB, but, oh, oh man, Vegas is just killing the Sharks right now. They are absolutely just killing San Jose. I, I actually thought Vegas w- w- uh, 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 was going to actually be uh, uh, the superior team in that matchup, but man, it's like uh, the the Sharks have to be lucky if the these refs wave off the goal because it's gonna be six nothing uh, by the end of this second period. But anyway, um, yeah, it, but that's the thing. It's like I don't. It's like the 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 Browns were playing some kind of weird mental mind game with themselves that they were like overthinking this thing because I, I still can't understand. How the thought process became, if we don't take Baker at number one, he's not going to be there at four. Because the only people talking up Baker Mayfield was were the Browns. So technically, like if you play, if you kept your mouth shut, you could have you could have just had him at four anyway, <laughs> or you could have had Darnold. That that's the part I don't understand. It's like. Who else was taking uh, another QB? Uh, unless you thought the uh, unless you thought the Broncos were going to take Darnold and trade with the Giants, and then the Jets were, were going to take Mayfield. That's the only thing that they were playing against. But if they, if, if you're playing against that, then yeah, you you uh, if if you don't like Rosen, then yeah, take Chubb or like you could have. There were so many different ways that Brown's going to play this. And it still yeah, wouldn't have yeah, been yeah. the worst thing in the world. Yeah, see, yeah, you choke. <laughs> the, to me, the Bronx choked with the number one pick. I, 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 I just look. You know, Cleveland fans. This is some of the best fans in the world, and so I hope for the fans' sake that something works out. But I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I... Yeah, it, it's just utterly bizarre. But, uh, yeah, so let, let's keep going here. Uh, so after 11 with Minka Fitzpatrick, the Bucks, uh, who had traded down, they take Vita Villa, uh, who's a good nose tackle for Washington. But the issue with Tampa is that Villa is only a two-down player, and the Bucks have such a terrible secondary. Derwin James is still there. And it's like the best safety in the draft. The guy who's ranked the number three best player in this draft on many of the, the experts' boards. He's still there. And you ignore him to take a nose tackle. When you already had okay. signed. Like Tampa had already signed nose tackles in free agency. That's why I don't understand what the Bucks are doing. You... 
You went after a free agent nose tackle. So why are you drafting another one? Yeah, but here's the other thing I don't understand. You don't understand. You should have taken the safety. Let's say you didn't take the safety. The Ron Payne. Did, did anybody watch the, the game against Clemson or the yeah. game against uh, Georgia? Yeah, no, it, 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 it's it's one of those where it's Washington like... Take the run, Washington takes the run pin right after you. You take him at 11, Washington takes the run pin at 12. You, if you put those two guys together and ask me which one I'm taking, I'm taking pain. Yeah. Because he just is a disruptive force in, in, in there. I, I mean, my... my, my... <laughs> My my th- my thing with uh, Payne is that I think Payne is a little bit more versatile. V is only a two down player. It's like uh, he's gotcha. you're, you're, you're not you're not you're not you're not, you're not, you're not using you're not need the versatile player. You're not using uh, V on third down because he's just too big of a guy. So uh, you know he's a clog the middle guy. Payne, you can do a few more uh, things with him. Uh, yeah, I, I I see your point, uh, but it's like if I'm taking a first round pick. I, I, I kind of want a, a three-down player. I, it's like, to me, that's that's how you maximize your value, <laughs> especially on defense. This, this, I, I, I don't understand. You need as your secondary. You ignore that. And you take a player that you're going to end up taking off the field on third down, especially if, 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 it's, if, if, it's, if it's more than... The only way you leave it him on the field on third down is if third down in a yard. You know, yeah. If it's still going, yeah. If you're gonna gonna run it, yeah. But if you're gonna stuff him and put a second down, it's gonna be young yeah, average and third down. You don't you don't need him on the field because as soon as they string the play out, it's a problem. You yeah. know, I I I just I'm like, you know, you, you gotta be kidding me. You know, like they're giving away players to these teams. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it, it was confusing. So then comes up the Saints with the most confusing pick of the draft. Uh, the Saints' defensive line is stacked. They 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 draft a, a Davenport, who's an edge rusher. I mean, I did a little bit of homework because I actually thought this was a guy that the Giants might look at in the second round because, it, like, like in terms of like the combine numbers, he he is he's kind of a stud. But I thought he, because of how many defensive defensive end and def, uh, defensive ends there were that were going to be edge rushers, I thought this was a second round pick kind of guy. So I thought we had time to get uh, get him. But the Saints not only traded up to get him, they gave up a first round pick for next year, which next year, which which I don't understand. It's like you you you, you unless this is Warren Sapp, you don't trade a first round pick for next year. It's like you got to be sure you got a Hall of Fame player. I, I mean, this is like this is the most bizarre one I, I've seen. It's like when, when I when I sort of said a, a, a first round pick in 2019, I'm like I'm thinking uh, 2019 is two years from now <laughs> because <laughs> I'm thinking there's no way you're gonna give up a first round pick next year because. So when they did that, everybody's thinking Lamar and Lamar Jackson. Lamar that, Jackson. Yeah, yeah that, that, we all thought this was Lamar Jackson. When I heard the name, I'm like, wait, what? It's like I, I actually thought I'm like, wait a second, that's a defensive end. It's like I, I actually thought there was another Marcus Davenport. I'm like, there's another Marcus yeah, Davenport. It's like was, I, I was, I was yeah, shocked. He was, on no, he was on nobody's board. Nobody had him on their board. I mean, nobody saw that one coming. You know, uh, it's it's I, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, that that was the most bizarre pick of the draft. That was the biggest screw up of the draft, to be honest. It's it's not the fact that they drafted him; it's the fact that they gave up the first round pick for next year. It's like, who else was taking him that high? That's where I didn't get it. Uh, a second round. A second round pick, uh, the first one, and, and I, I think uh, uh, they give us three picks. Yeah, including that number one next year. Yeah, th- that's why I'm so uh, I'm so confused by that pick. I'm so confused. Yeah, 
I, I, I don't know. Well, everybody said it. When you give up a number one, it's got to be a big time, you know. It's, it's a big time move. I, I, mean, I, was, I, 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 I'm, I was just I, I so just... I was genuinely confused by that pick. I was genuinely confused because I didn't know what they were doing there. I, I, I honestly thought it was a mistake. I, I, I thought maybe they announced the wrong name or something. But, yeah, the, that was the worst pick in the first round just because of how much they traded to get go up for that one. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? It's not that the guy may not be a good player. It's, it's that the, the, I mean, the first round picks is kind of like for quarterbacks or – so if I had all the famous that you, I mean, it's you're giving up your first round next year. Yeah, very, very, very confusing pick. So uh, th- yeah, next up, yeah, next up at 15, we had uh, Colton Miller for uh, the Raiders. Like, like I said, the Raiders needed a tackle. They got to keep David Carr healthy. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm saying David Carr. I mean Derek Carr. Uh, you know the. the but uh, it's because I'm seeing David Carr on TV for NFL Network right now. But, um, yeah, it's like Derek Carr has to stay healthy. They needed a tackle. So, you know, it, they, they drafted the uh, best player at the position they need. So I don't have an issue with that one. Uh, it's just uh, some folks uh, had him as a second round kind of pick just because tackle wasn't that strong of a position. It was the guards that were rated highly this year, not necessarily the tackles. But, you know, if you, if you need a player – you know, in a neat spot, I, I get it. The Bills, even though I'm not that high on Josh Allen, th- their best first round pick is Tremaine Edmonds because him, uh, Tremaine Edmonds falling at, all the way down to 16 when he was basically ranked anywhere from six to eight on most mock drafts. That's great value for uh, uh, the Bills. I mean, y- you got a great linebacker. I mean. Uh, I I still think Roquan Smith is the better linebacker, but you know that's a really good uh, that's a really good draft pick considering where he was actually projected to be. And it's not as though the the bill the Bills are bursting with talent on the defense, given how many players they traded away last year. So the Bills needed to replenish that defense. So uh, uh, that was a good pick by the Bills, and then because of that it was almost a foregone conclusion unless the Chargers screwed this up that they would actually have the best pick of the first round because of the fact that Derwin James fell to them in their laps. If they if they somehow uh if they somehow uh did not draft Derwin James here, I, I you know, I, I would swear to I swear that something came out with Derwin James had some kind of injury that teams find out about at the last minute because for him to go all the way from being ranked as high as three to falling all the way down to uh, 17, it's like there, there was a chance that uh, the uh, the Jets were trading up to two uh, uh, with the Giants just to panic and that someone else would actually get the third, uh, the third pick, and that being the Giants, and just taking James, which we would have liked because that, that would have uh, just given us the – uh, the partner uh, with uh, Landon Collins that we've been saying that the Giants needed yeah. to do. So, they, I mean, yeah. the Chargers just got the best safety in the draft. I, I, I you know, between him and, 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 and Fitzpatrick, I, I think is, is the, the two best safeties they had there. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, the Chargers, because, the, char- the Chargers haven't uh, filled, filled the spot uh uh, that the safety spot since Eric Weddle left. So I mean, th- this is a yeah. great pick. I mean, that, I I thought this was the best pick in the first round, just because you got a top five guy at seventeen, and there's no injury issue. It's just that teams were that dumb that he fell to seventeen, and you didn't even have to trade. That's the best part. They didn't even have to trade for this pick. They didn't even have to trade up for this pick. This was their actual draft spot, and he fell all the way down there. That's why I think some of these teams just deserve to get. Uh, uh, I mean, again, I don't understand how some of these guys get paid as much as they do to be make as many bad picks as they do. And 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 to be and to be and to be, and to be fair, I blame the Packers because to me, the Packers, as soon as Derwin James was falling, the Packers should have traded up and passed the Chargers to get Derwin James. 
Because don't I, I have no idea how the Packers don't trade up as bad as the Packers' defense is right now that they don't get the best defensive player available. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the other guy that's – the other thing that surprised me because I'm not going to act like I know everybody. Uh, the Cowboys pick, I, I – Did you ever notice this guy play? Okay, so here's the issue with Van Der Esch. Uh, Van Der Esch is a good run stopper. I actually think that Van Der Esch is probably the, uh, what the Cowboys are looking to do because Sean Lee just can't seem to stay medically healthy. I think Van Der Esch is the insurance policy. Now, here's the, here's the reason why I have a little bit of an issue with the Cowboys going down that route. Not that I would ever feel sorry for the Cowboys uh, for making a questionable pick, but my issue with Van Der Esch is the fact that uh, one team in the NFC uh, flunked him uh, for the medical evaluation because of his neck. Now, if there's a team that already thinks that the kid's neck is not necessarily the most stable before he even hits the NFL field, what's the long-term viability uh, that uh, the neck won't become an issue as he starts playing more and more games and he goes through a 16-game season. It's like, to me, in one of the more uh, devastating positions because of where your 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 neck ends up being on most tackles, uh, th- that's the one pick where I'm like, you know, I get what they're trying to do, but at the same time, I, I, got, I got some question marks there. Because that 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 pick that pick felt like a Jerry pick, not necessarily uh, the front because, office picked him. Uh, you know, um, um, like um, um, Kuiper said, that guy had one good season. Last season was his best season. Is that you know? He hope he can duplicate it again, but is he had one good season? Was last last season? So. You know, you picking a guy off for one good season. Yeah. And it's the same thing Kuiper said. You know they're trying to replace Sean Lee. You know, because Sean Lee is never healthy, but it's basically one season. Yeah. You, you, you're picking this guy on. Yeah. So, I don't know. Because I don't know him. Yeah. I don't, I don't know the guy. I, I haven't seen that much of Boise State. Yeah. I, I mean, again, it, it's, just, it's, it's just one thing where I'm just like, there, there were question marks there. So, uh, Van Der Esch was 19. 18, uh, the Packers take uh, took a Jair Alexander. You know, not necessarily a, a bad pick. It's just one where if I had a chance to get Derwin James, I, I know uh, Green Bay uh, uh, got the Saints pick by trading back. But to me, if... I had the chance to get Derwin James, and I've got that extra first round pick from the Saints. I can probably use that and try to, and, and try to get uh, like a couple extra picks uh, because I have that uh, Saints pick in my back pocket and get the best defensive player available in Derwin James and get a couple of second round picks in the, in the, in, in, on the way to boot and rebuild that secondary. So you could have gotten Jair Alexander, I think. And still gotten Derwin James. That, that's where I, I'm. Yeah. I, I'm. Uh, I, I really, I really don't kind of. I really don't understand what the thought process was here because, you know, again, you want to get the best player available, especially if you're, if you're trying to upgrade the secondary. But the fact that you you kind of hoodwink the Saints into giving up uh, a first round pick for next year, you could have. You could have. Uh, just gotten a little more capital because now you're just sitting on that first round pick. You might as well have put it to use and gotten some extra picks to fill out that secondary because Aaron Rodgers ain't getting any younger. That's the thing. It's like the uh, and yeah. he's and he's still pissed off about uh, Jordan Nelson being gone. Uh, I mean, I think the uh, the Packers really owed it to themselves to like not you only, to not only Jordan Nelson. He um, he's he's pissed off that. Uh, that uh, the quarterbacks coach is not coming back. Yeah, yeah, no. Aaron Rodgers is salty. Yeah, Aaron Aaron Rodgers is salty on a, on a lot of issues right now. But uh, 
you know, I thought yeah. if they if they did a true uh, proper rebuild through the draft of this uh, the secondary, uh, that might have actually helped certain things. But I I just didn't think that, uh, the Packers did enough uh, uh, tonight. But anyway, uh, so at pick twenty. Uh, uh, at 20 and 21 were both centers. Uh, both guys I was looking at for the Giants where, you know, like we said, if we had traded back, I think these were, again, other alternatives. Even yeah. if we didn't, yeah. e- even yeah, if we yeah, went with, picks, yeah. yeah, even if we went with Chubb instead of Nelson, we probably could have gotten, uh, uh, so uh, the Lions got Frank Rag now and uh, the Bengals got Billy Price. I was looking more towards Price than Rag now just because I really liked I really liked how Billy Price uh, uh, managed the offensive line for Ohio State. He was a good, he was a good blocker, good run blocker, especially. The only question about uh, Price was the fact that uh, he was a uh, he was uh, uh, had some medical issues. Otherwise, Price probably would have been the top uh, top uh, five pick in most years. This year was just like bonkers in terms of like how the evaluations were going, but. Uh, uh, Price, uh, if he, if he didn't have the medical issues, he 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 would have been ranked that much higher. Uh, Titans had a nice pick at linebacker here. Uh, I I I liked uh, Rashawn Evans. I mean, he looked really yeah. good for Alabama. Uh, you know, like I said, it's like there's there were a ton of really good linebackers that I was hoping that the Giants would have been able to trade back and be able to pick up. Uh, you know, Titans got a good. Uh, 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 pick there because uh, uh, you know even if they're not the highest grade Alabama linebackers with Saban Saban knows how to identify the true NFL prospects you're at least going to get a competent starter uh, even if they're not going to be an all-star world beater on defense you're at least going to get a serviceable NFL starter and you know once you get towards the back end of the first round you're you're just trying to make sure you don't have any busts Yeah. yeah, but I, I, that's the only reason I, and like I said, I don't want to like do, I don't like Saquon Barkley, but I think we'd have, we, we would have been better off if we were at the back of the draft and get more than one pick. Uh, that's, that's, the multiple picks is, is what I would have loved. If, if we could have picked up Nelson and, like I said, Let's say we go deep into the draft and we get that, that same set of price. If we get Nelson and get him, Eli is set. Yeah. You know, he can sit there all day to throw. You know? So, I, you know, but I, you know, let's see what they have at the, at the, 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 in the second rounds. Yeah, and well, they, well, this. They, 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 well, yeah, for, for the Giants, this is where Gettleman's got to start earning his keep because he's going to have to start getting creative uh, in the next uh, tomorrow. Well, well, actually, it just, turned, it just we just went past midnight, but uh, this is where Gettleman's going to have to start earning his paycheck uh, because he, he's got, he's going to have to uh, uh, make some moves because I still think the Giants are going to have to make some trades and maybe move back on some picks in order to replenish, because we need to have more bodies in the training camp to actually push these guys to win these jobs. Because the worst thing that Jerry Reese ever did for the Giants is just started handing out jobs to guys just because he he drafted them and is like, "Yep, you're gonna play." And as soon as Tom Coughlin left the building, that uh, that kind of uh, sense of entitlement permeated the entire roster because there were too many guys that felt the need that they didn't need to work hard for a job, which is why you got Eli Apple and Eric Flowers uh, doing nothing on the team. Yeah, well, the, um, it's not only that. The other, the other problem is the amount of bad picks. Oh, yeah, that, the, then there were the guys we who had, couldn't play. But that's that my... We uh, have no depth. But that's the thing. The giant... The Giants were so bad at picking guys in the middle rounds that you knew those guys weren't going to make it. So that's why some of these other guys were just like, I'm set because this guy can't take my job, so why am I working this hard? Uh, I mean, when, when, when you have the, 
the the Martin Moors and the 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 Izu Izika and I mean these guys I mean they, none of them is on the goddamn team. Yeah, no, they're out of the league. The on the team. And the problem is they're not on anybody at this team. Yeah, it's no. Not like yeah, I can say that. Ah, oh, they screwed us. They didn't play good for us, and now they make. It. No, they're not. They're out of the league. Yeah. So which means it never should have been drafted in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, it, going now to twenty three, uh, the Patriots are finally up. So people thought this might have been where Lamar Jackson would have gone. Uh, it said the uh, Patriots take Isaiah went from Georgia. Now people were knocking this pick a bit because Wins got uh, is undersized. He's only six two as a tackle. And his uh, his wingspan length, uh, uh, his ar- his arms aren't the longest for a tackle. They're, so they think he's a guard. My take on it is he's not good for a left tackle because uh, the arm the arm size is uh, and the size isn't the best. I think as a right tackle, he's a good guy because he's got a nice wide base. He can he can stuff a a, a bull rush. And he he's strong enough and compact enough that I think he he's a good guy you can run behind. I I I dis, I disagree with that. And uh, what happened subsequently uh, with the Patriots drafting Sony Michel, I I think that's exactly what they were looking towards is uh, the fact that uh, they could actually set uh, set up a, a, a set, set an edge. And uh, use that outside run game. I I, I just kind of looked at it and said that uh, you know you can uh, well, you can you can you can do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, but the one thing you sure about the pitcher is not going to put anybody at left tackle that's not good because you know Brady's not going to stand for it. Yeah. So, if yeah. he doesn't work out, if 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 it's training camp and, and he's getting beat, there's no way he's going on the field as a left tackle. Yeah, I, I, Brady shout in there. Yeah, I I'd be shocked if he's a left tackle, but I think he'd be an f- excellent right tackle. And I know people say you don't draft the right tackle in the first round, but if you if you, if you don't actually have a good right tackle, you're still gonna get your uh, your head kicked in uh, against somebody's defenses. So. You gotta have a strong right tackle that can actually handle a bull rush, and he's good actually at that. So I still think that that's a, a very good pick there, especially the fact that he's a good run blocker too. Mm. So uh, next up, we got the Panthers with finally a wide receiver going off the board uh, with DJ Moore. I mean, this uh, th- this this was like uh, getting kind of crazy with the amount of wide receivers. That are still, even though this wasn't a deep draft for wide receiver, like the fact that it took this long. I mean, the first wide receiver required was uh, was in a trade because like uh, the Raiders uh, got uh, Martavis Bryant from the uh, Steelers, uh, yeah, and then, uh, which yeah, Pittsburgh traded their, their pain. They, they traded away their pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I love best about that is you know, you you, you had Crabtree who was a, a professional. You bring in Jordy Nelson, and then Gruden, who says he wants to clean up the character of the Raiders and started cutting all these players like Marquette King, he then goes and trades for uh, Martavis Bryant, who has all these uh, issues off the field. I, I, it's like a, it's such a scatter shot. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see because I didn't understand that one because, hey, if, 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 if um if Pittsburgh coach can't get that guy to to fall in line, I I, I don't know. I, I I really don't know. I I think this guy is too much of an asshole. But hey, you know I'm not making that trade. Uh, I'm I'm but just. Davis Brand is one of the most talented receivers in the league. He has speed to burn and he can run a good route. The problem is, one, he gets, I mean, this is a guy that got suspended twice. He missed almost an entire season. So, you know, uh, you're playing with a guy who gets suspended again and and never come back. 
So that's the first thing. Uh, uh, and then the other thing is when he is on the field, he, there's issues with him because he thinks you're not throwing at him enough. Uh, he needs to be the leading guy. I mean, I, I, I don't know. You know, because if he gets so much problems with Antonio Brown and and, and, um, and Le'Veon Bell, and, and they're all black guys, uh, maybe if Carl starts throwing to, to Jordy Nesley, maybe like, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, it's like, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not. Comments I, because some of the comments I hear this guy make on, on Pittsburgh and, 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 you know, it, it's, it's Antonio Brown and, and, and Le'Veon Bell. And so I, what do you want me to say with, with Jordy Nelson and David Carr? I, I mean, you know. I, I, I'm surprised that Gruden wants this guy. I, I, I don't it, know any, it, why anybody would want him. Anyway. It, 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 to you me, know, to me, it was because he's all headache, and we we drafted him. So the thing, but I, I can bet you. I can bet you there's a party going on in Pittsburgh right now. Yeah, it, it was just, it was bizarre. It was just a bizarre trade. E- even though you, e- and I mean, yeah, is Martavis Bryant worth more than a third round pick? Yeah, but when Martavis Bryant brings as much baggage as he does, you know what? That's a pretty good deal for Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal for yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, but all, all things considered, uh, with the pick uh, the Panthers made, DJ Moore is a good pick. I mean, the Panthers have no number one wide receiver. I mean, Kelvin Benjamin, they gave up on because they didn't think that the knee was ever going to be the same. So they gave up on him and made and traded him. So they needed to bring somebody in for uh, uh, they had to give up Cam. On him. He, he, the, knee, the knee never came back, and he never, uh, or is, I don't know if to say the knee never came back, or he never worked. Hard enough to 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 think the knee, but I mean, if Kevin Benjamin get any bigger, he's gonna have to be a, 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 a tight end. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the guy is just he's just getting too big. Yeah, yeah. Jesus guy, you mean the the thing give up a two goal lead? Oh, the Capitals. Of course it did. You're you're shocked that the Capitals blow another lead to Pittsburgh? Really? That's what you're shocked about? <laughs> of course, they gave up a two goal lead to the uh, to the Penguins. That's what they do. Oh my! Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, no, no, all, all that action earlier, yeah, yeah, that third, that third, that third goal, Hopey gave up. Yeah, that's exactly what happens every time they play against Pittsburgh. God. Yep. Uh, yep. Wide open net. Wide open yeah, net. He didn't get it up. He didn't, he, that's a top shelf. You got to shoot top shelf. There. You can't Wide open it net. Go. Wide open net, and you still can't get a top shelf, and you hit it right into Murray. Yep. Okay, okay, you got, you got to go high there. I, I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, the but, Capitals. Uh, yeah. What can I tell you? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes. yeah. So at, after after Moore goes, uh, the Ravens had to pick at twenty five. Uh, so uh, they they traded down a couple of times. Uh, I mean, the Ravens had no tight ends. Uh, you know, th- this is uh, th- this was a pick where it's like they they really needed a tight end because uh, they haven't had one since Ben Watson left. The first time, <laughs> it's like it's like they keep they keep bring they keep recycling out different uh, uh, tight ends because they they haven't had a true pass catching tight end beast like since Todd Heap retired. I mean it, it it's it's been a couple of years that give, given uh, as many check down throws as Flacco throws uh, these days. Uh, they they need to have somebody who can catch the ball so. Uh, Hurst was a, a a good pick there. Uh, at twenty six, I liked, I really liked Atlanta going with Calvin Ridley. Uh, Ridley is a beast of a receiver. You pair him with Julio Jones, an- another Alabama wide receiver. 
that can kind of sh- show, show the rookie the ropes. Uh, this is a really good, and the thing is, really, it's a good route runner. Uh, just like Julio, I, I think this is a really well-matched uh, duo that I, I think uh, makes a lot of sense, just given the fact that Julio's getting up there in H. He needs a little bit more, uh, as much as I like Muhammad Sanu, he needs another speedster that can actually open up the offense. And some of the wide receivers that Atlanta has, uh, even though they have speed, they don't run proper routes. So I, I think Ridley helps in that regard where you have a guy who can do both and give a little bit of a release to Julio Jones so he doesn't always have the entire defense collapsing in on him. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that was 26. 27, the Seahawks. I am legitimately concerned about Pete Carroll at this point because, you know, I, I was, like, going back through why, my... Why why you think he would take an offensive lineman? It's, it, I mean, Russell Wilson is running for his dear life every game, and you're telling me that instead of, like, the eight different running backs you already have, you're going to go... You think the, the solution to the problem is... Is to add another running back to the mix. And not only that, you add a running back that's pretty much the exact same running back in 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 the body type and build as all the other guys on the roster that you currently have. There, there's, there is no difference between him and anybody else on that roster. And you still have no offensive line. And it's still a reach pick. It's like this guy was a third round pick in a lot of drafts. And at most, a second round, late second round pick, but you pick him in the first round. It's like it, 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 the only reason why this wasn't a, the, the only reason why this wasn't worse than uh uh than because uh, like there there are two other uh, there was uh, oh, the pick right after this one with Edmonds, uh, people had an issue with the pick. Uh, because Edmonds was predict, uh, project, uh, projected for the second and third round. That one, I, I, I don't kill as much as uh, uh, this pick with Rashad Petty to the Seahawks or the Dav- uh, the Davenport pick with uh, the Saints because the Saints traded their first round pick next year. Uh, just like on a pure but pick basis, what, what this understand. is the worst pick. Because, again, this... There, <laughs> I, I would rather pick the, the, the LSU guy, guys. Yes! But that's my point. If you were taking a running back, at least you go with a guy with a burst of speed like Geis. That's at least so somewhat game changing speed. But this this was just not like only um, that, not only that you pick a guy who runs against Alabama twice a year, Alabama Auburn. I mean, you know, I I want the guy who has shown me that he can he can go up against these defenses. Yeah. But you but know, get, but, uh, but but you but you yeah. know what's which is so stupid about this is that the Patriots uh, pick uh, so, uh, Sony uh, Sony Michel just four picks later, which is a better option yeah. than what you just did. I, that's why I'm looking at Pete Carroll. And I'm saying Pete Carroll, I, I, like Pete Carroll's going to get himself yeah. fired, and it's going to be justified. Hey, I'm I'm the smartest one. Out, I'm the smartest sharpest knife in the drawer. You don't you don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, it's like I'm like yeah. I, 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 I it's like even with Russell Wilson, if Russell Wilson can't fix something that uh, that's a, uh, getting a go uh, becoming this broken because it, it, it's just like I, I really do. Uh, I, I'll, I'll just shake my head. Oh, geez, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> San Jose pulled their goalie uh, back in the second period when it, uh, when it went to five nothing. They have now reinserted their regular goalie back into the game after the backup gave up two more goals. So it's seven nothing uh, Vegas now, but now San Jose's playing their starter, uh, starting goaltender again, because they're trying to make sure that Vegas doesn't score ten on them tonight. That that's that's the point we're at in the hockey game. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, so. Uh, Terrell Edmonds goes at 28. Uh, you know, we talked about Shazier. Edmonds, I think what the Steelers are kind of looking for uh, is uh, 
obviously a replacement for Shazier, but they actually think that Edmonds has the speed, so he's he's kind of closer. They they view him closer to being a Cam Chancellor type, where he can do he can be a safety in a box, but at at the same time he can do some run st- stuffing. Uh, a lot of guys yeah. are thinking this is a pick, but I I think he's uh, I think uh, uh, people are are expecting him to. Uh, be like his brother, who's also a linebacker in the league. But, uh, I mean, this is – I thought this was another reach in the draft where, you know, you, you're, you're kind of looking at it and saying that uh, uh, th- this is uh, this is just uh, more of a, uh, of a of a case where, you know, uh, Tremaine Edwards, even though – I think he's a beast of a linebacker. Terrell, I mean, it, it's it's a nice story that you got two brothers that are linebackers that go in the first round, but uh, he he's just not as good as Tremaine. That, that that's why I'm like, this is a second round pick that you took in the first round. So I, I have some yeah. questions with the Steelers there because uh, uh, again, I, I see what they're trying to do and trying to adopt a kind of more Seattle mode where you have a, a linebacker that kind of functions as a safety so he can guard the tight end. So they're, they're yeah. trying they're, they're, cause they're, they're drafting him in a way to try to mitigate uh, Gronk. That's what this pick really is. And at least that's what it screams to me is that uh, they're, they're trying to figure out a way of beating new England. But my thing is in order to beat new England first, you actually have to get to a position where you can be in the AFC title game. So, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm a little confused by the pick. I, it just seems like you're overthinking that one. But um, Jacksonville, uh, they didn't really need uh, they did, didn't really need Brian, uh, so they took Taven Brian, the, uh, the defensive tackle for Florida. One of the few reasons to actually watch Florida football last year because it sure as hell wasn't for their offense. But uh, you know, he's a good another good defensive tackle. I was like. These were guys that I was looking for the Giants to be taking. So it's a little frustrating seeing some of them go off the board uh, in the first round late because I thought they were going to be able to hang around into the second round. But uh, uh, it's, but he, he, he's, he's a good pick, though. Uh, yeah, so another another pick that was a solid one. Uh, uh, Hughes goes to the Vikings. Another guy that was uh, projected late first round, second round pick. Uh, good corner. Uh, but again, this is uh, one of those picks where, uh, you know, certain teams just made picks where uh, it, it's just like, uh, I, I kind of look, it's like what the what the Packers did tonight uh I'm still very confused by it because they passed on the best corner. Uh, uh, I mean, they passed on the best uh, uh, secondary person, Derwin James, to grab uh, Jair Alexander. But my thing is, Alexander, in terms of valuation, he was right about the same as Mike Hughes. So it's like the Packers passed up on a chance to get the best uh, secondary person if they had, hadn't had traded down so many times. And they still didn't get the same. Uh, they still got about the same value as the Vikings did. So that's why it's like some of these picks uh, uh, just uh, drove me nuts a bit. Uh, so we talked about this uh, pick at thirty-one, Sony Michel. Uh, I mean, the only issue that Michel had was the fact that he was fumbling in the uh, in the college football championship game. Uh, outside of that, you know, Bill Belichick is going to work on him holding on to the football. So. I don't worry about him fumbling because you, you can always learn to, to hold on to the football. It's like that, that's that is teachable. That is teachable. That's and that's just sticking with technique. I I don't worry about that. Yeah. And and Tiki always talks about that, like how uh, you know he he had to learn the five points of contact, and that's. That's what what he eventually yeah, exactly. l- l- learned to do, and that, that's yeah, that's what saved his career. Yeah, yeah. The, the the coach made him walk around with that ball in his hands all day. Yeah, you know. But so, yeah, 
Well, uh, but yeah, the, that's 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 the yeah, but to cap off the draft, yeah. and we and we talked about uh, to cap off the first round of the draft, we talked about this one. Lamar uh, Jackson uh, going to the Ravens. The Ravens trade back into the first round. Uh, you know, my thing is, and this is why I kind of look at some of these teams as like Pittsburgh could have used Lamar Jackson. Like, uh, see, uh, even if Seattle, even with Russell Wilson, like Seattle could have used uh, Lamar Jackson just in case. You ever had the worst case scenario happen with Russell Wilson? Because you could always flip for Lamar Jackson down the road. It's like some of these teams like make these draft picks and reach for guys that they you know aren't going to make a difference. Lamar Jackson can legitimately make a difference for an NFL franchise. And even if he, if your starter, you think his star, uh, your starter has a few more years to go, you could always flip them and uh, get quite a bit of value because the Jimmy Garoppolo thing has proven that. You can still take a backup QB that hasn't played that many games, and and uh, because they can still win games even though they haven't seen the field that much, teams are going to value that even more after seeing Garoppolo. Because you can bet that there are certain teams that are like, oh man, I wish I had given up even more to the Patriots just to just to make sure that he didn't go to the 49ers. Uh, you know, uh, NFL teams are thinking that. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see what's going on tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there, there's going to be there's going to be quite a bit of movement. I, I I'm assuming because some of these teams that I I, I just think that they had vapor lock because it, it's very confusing what the hell the the Browns were doing. It, it's like I, I'm just uh, because the Browns got the Browns have two of the first three picks tomorrow night and I still don't know what the hell their their plan is. It's very confusing. Uh, I, I, like I said, I would love if we can get a, a trade and give us a couple more picks because we really, really need to replenish that that, that roster. Because uh, even some of the guys that we still have on the roster from <clears throat> from that. From that uh, uh, thing, era is, is is a lot of them. The the drop off is too 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 wide from the starters, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. But we traded for Ogilvy. Did we trade? Did we trade for 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 an offensive lineman from the Jaguars? Yeah. So uh, so we, we traded. We traded. Uh, uh... I think it was either a conditional seventh or a late sixth round pick, but yeah, we we, we did yeah. we did tr- we did uh, give that up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so because we gotta get at least two linemen tomorrow. And I'm not, not, well, not tomorrow. By the end of the draft, we gotta have at least two linemen to plug in there. You know, because we lost Pew. And we lost Westbrook. Yeah. Westbrook, I don't mind too much. Uh, I mean, Richburg Rich, yeah. Rich, Rich got paid because uh, I thought Pew got a, 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 you know, even though it was a bit of a rich contract that uh, uh, Pew got, I thought he had earned that. Richburg, I'm still trying to uh, put my finger yeah, on what well, the hell that they're looking at. Better because, them than us. We did that <laughs> shit with Beatle. With, 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 with. With, with, with uh, uh, Beetle. Yeah. So uh, uh, I don't I don't want to be paying people money for for jobs that they can't do. Yeah. So you know because I I. That's like if if if, 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 if if you if you want to pay a good center that m- amount, yeah. If you want to pay an average center like Richburg that amount, uh, I I, re- I really don't know what you're doing, but uh, more power to you. I, I, because I don't understand the last time the rich book opened up a, a hole in that center for somebody to run through. So I, I, you know, when I saw he left, I was like, Jesus Christ, I've been trying to get rid of that center for so long, you know. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. You know, so let's, let's, let's start from there and, 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 uh, you know, you know. We already have Eric Flores sitting there doing nothing. Uh, maybe, maybe this year. Well, you know, because um, 
I agree with um with um oh shit, well, that that Jewish guy, the Giants fan, um uh not Rosenberg, um what's his name again? Ah, fuck it, I, I can't remember his name. But um he says, hey, just because he's moving from left tackle, it don't mean that he can play right tackle because once you don't move your feet, they're going to go around here at, at, on the right side, just as, the same thing as the left side. So, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I don't even know if, if, there's a, if there's a redeeming quality for Eric Flowers. So but we'll see this year. Yeah. You know, you know because it may just be a bust. Is already a bust because we took him at number ten. So uh, you know we already losing there. So hey, it may be time to just move on from that. But we'll see. All right, let me go get some mess. So yeah, we, we, we talk tomorrow. Yeah, we got plenty more to cover uh, with the draft. So you take it easy, yeah. Cali. Yeah, we yeah we. Yeah, we got this Saturday. All right, we'll talk. All right, take it easy. Uh, okay, sir. All right. All right. All right, folks. I mean, as we discussed at length, I mean, this has turned out to be a very interesting draft for a number of reasons. And I, I can't wait to see how uh, round two and three pan out because there there, there were... There were definitely aspects of tonight where I'm, I'm still scratching my head as to how Derwin James fell that far. It just doesn't make sense. And the fact that certain teams kept passing on Lamar Jackson as, as often as they did. Because I, I get what New England was trying to do. New England made sense. Uh, but uh, there there's quite a bit else going on with some of these teams that uh, just d- don't line up. Especially Arizona. I you know, Arizona grabbing uh, <laughs> Rosen to back up their other injury-prone quarterback uh, just just screams lack of foresight, but who knows. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all for the show tonight. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll, we'll catch up more with uh, the rounds two or three of the NFL draft. Take care now.